Happy Sabbath, saints. Thank you very much for coming to Sabbath, coming to the movement as we move. I have to keep saying movement. We are not a church, we are a movement. And we are moving. And we are moving heavenwards. Thank you very much for that song. That was very uh, uh, sweet music. We all want to be Christians who are on the move. I've got a, a, a statement here from First Selected Messages, page 415, paragraph 3. It says, we do not go deep enough in our search for the truth. We do not go deep enough in our search for the truth. So today we're going to try and go deep enough. If you sleep, we're going to have to sing a song so that everybody stays awake. The reason being that what we are going to study is about to happen or is in the process of happening. So we really need to be awake. We really need to, as, as we go through the verses, please, I am hoping that you're writing them down somewhere. When you go home, you will dig deep enough in your search for the truth. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for blessing us and giving us this time. As we study your word, as we dig deep, open our minds and help us to understand. In Jesus' name, amen. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. We're going to do the ministry of angels. So, the first question we're going to do a question and answer. The first question we're going to look at is, what are angels? Or what is an angel? Okay, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 10, verses, Ezekiel chapter 10, verses 6 to 12. Ezekiel chapter 10, verses 6 to 12. You will see as we go through the study why this is important to Ezekiel chapter 10, verses 6 to 12. Ezekiel is talking about what he is seeing in vision. Are we there? And the Bible reads, And it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels from between the cherubims, that he went in and stood beside the wheels. And one cherub stood forth his hand from between the cherubims unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took thereof and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, and took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under the wings. So this is what Ezekiel is saying. And when I looked, behold, four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by another cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was as the color of a barrel. Verse 12. And their whole body is describing the cherubims. Their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheel that is forehead. So Ezekiel, when he's looking at these angels, he sees they have backs, they have hands, and they have wings. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Sorry, Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 to 3. Genesis 19, verses 1 to 3. Are we there? 19 verses 1 to 3. And there came two angels. This is the story of Lot in Sodom. And there came two angels to, to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with, the, with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And you shall rise up early and go up your ways. And they said, Nay, but we abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned unto him, entered into his house. He made them a feast, and he did bake a leavened bread, and they did eat. Angels eat. Angels are beings with physical bodies. They are not spirits 
or souls of human beings who died and went to heaven and have come back to minister to the people on earth. So angels are beings, but they have physical bodies. You remember in Genesis chapter 3, verses 23 to 24, when Adam and Eve sinned, Genesis chapter 3, verses 23 to 24, the Bible reads, Therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove the man and placed, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned away to keep the way of the tree. Adam and Eve were driven from the Garden of Eden and the cherubims were stationed at the east of the Garden of Eden to keep the way of the Tree of Life. Cherubims are an order of angels. This event in Genesis chapter 3 verses 23 to 24 happened before any human being had died. Okay? Let's look at, somebody might look at Hebrews, somebody may look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 and Psalms 104 verse 4. So let's go to Psalms 104 verse 4. I hope you're writing these verses down. Psalms 104 verse 4. Psalms 104, 104 verse 4. Okay. The Bible reads, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Now, let's also read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. Thirteen and fourteen. Are we there? Hebrews chapter 1, verses 13 to 14. We are learning about angels. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So somebody reads that and says, you see, angels are spirits. Right. Angels are spiritual beings that are organized in a different way to the way we are organized on earth. They are just a different level of beings that God created that are organized differently to the way you and I are organized here on earth. Now, let's look at this thing of spiritual. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. Let's do the digging of the truth. Let's do the digging of the truth in God's word. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. 15, 1 Corinthians 1, 5, verse 44. Are we there? The Bible reads, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. He's talking about the resurrection. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body there and there is a spiritual body. The natural body we now have, now, is what we're having, this natural body. But in the resurrection, we shall have a spiritual body. For then in the resurrection, we shall be equal to angels. Now, where is the verse for that? Let's go to Luke 20, verse 34 to 36. Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 20. Are we there? The Bible reads, 
And Jesus say, answering said unto them, The children of this world marry. Luke chapter 20, verse 34. Luke 20, 34. So this is Jesus talking when they came to him, the Sadducees and the Pharisees came to him asking about marriage in the resurrection. Jesus answering said to them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. So who is this now? Who, should, who will be accounted worthy of the resurrection? Us. Okay? Neither can they die anymore. For they are, what? Read the next phrase. What are they? What does the Bible say in verse 36? They are equal to angels. Are we all together, saints? So angels are real beings with physical bodies who all, who, that are different to our physical bodies we now have on earth, but they exist. Now, can we see angels? Can we see them? Now, let's go to Numbers 22. We know the story of this one. I hope we all do know the story of Numbers chapter 22. And let's read 22 to 27. I'll read 22 to 27. Numbers 22. This is the story of Balaam. You know Balaam? This is the story of Balaam. Numbers 22. Verse 22, I will read. And God's anger was kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel standing in the way and the sword drawn in his hand and the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn it into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards. Well, a wall being on the side and a wall on the, uh, on the other side. Verse 27. And they asked, saw the angel and the Lord and the, uh, the angel of the Lord and she fell down under Balaam and Balaam's anger was kindled and he smote the ass with the staff. The donkey saw the angel. Balaam could not see it. Verse 31 of the same chapter same chapter, Numbers 22, verse 31 to 35. Then, Numbers 22. We are doing translations. Yes. Oh, I'm going to slow down now. Thank you very much. I'm going to slow down. Numbers, it's because I'm looking at the clock, you see. This is the problem. Numbers 22, verse 31 to 35. It's still in the same chapter, the story of Balaam. And the Bible, I'll read verse 31 and verse 35. And the angel, then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. So all along, the angel had been there, and Balaam could not see it. But it was when God opened the eyes of Balaam that Balaam was able to see the angel. But the angel could see Balaam. So angels can see us, but we can't see them. And the only way we can see angels is if God opens our eyes. You remember when we did uh, the books in heaven? Or if you read in Revelation chapter 20, where it says books are opened, it is these angels that are recording what is happening. So right now, as we are sitting here, angels are recording, walking among us, seeing who is paying attention, who is playing, who is not listening, who is thinking of other things. The angels are writing that against your name. So, if I were you, I would stay awake because the one who's watching you, you cannot see them. 
And you don't know what they've just written a few minutes ago against your name. Okay? Just to keep us awake. Now, let's go to the... So, if you, you, you will see the same story. Remember Elisha, when he was surrounded, and he said to God, God, open my servant's eyes, and they were opened, and he could see a whole host of angels that surrounded where Elisha was. So, we can only see angels when God opens our eyes. Right, so it was the same with the, uh, Elisha right now. What we need to know is, how many angels are there? How many are they? Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 20. Now here, he is talking about when Moses went to the Mount of um, Mount, uh, you know when Moses went into the mountain to meet God to be given the commandments, right? So he says here, I'll start from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 20. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touched the mount, the mountain it shall be stoned or thrust through the uh, with the dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But you are come unto Mount Sion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to and what? An innumerable company of angels. What does the word innumerable mean? So there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of angels. And there are only seven billion human beings. So we are outnumbered by angels. These angels, though they are billions and billions and billions and billions of them, they are all subject to one. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4 to 6. Are we there? It says here, being made so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Verse 6, And again when he bring in the first begotten into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. You find the same thing in First Peter 3, 21 to 22. All angels are subject to Christ. Every angel is subject to Christ. Now, having done that, let's now go to the familiar passage of Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 12. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 12. I haven't lost anybody. We are still all together. Okay, Revelation chapter 12, verses 7, let's start with verse 7 to 9. Revelation chapter 12, the Bible reads, are we there? And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. And the great dragon was cast out of that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So the result of the war was that the angels were cast down to the earth. Okay? So there was war in heaven, and the angels were cast down to the earth. So that means... On this earth, there are billions 
and billions of angels. And there are only seven billion human beings. So we are outnumbered by angels. Okay? Now, let's look at, this is where I need you to come with me, saints. Let's go to the book of Jude. Let's look at Jude chapter 6. Sorry, Jude verse 6. Jude, J-U-D-E, before the book of Revelation. Verse 6. Let's see where these angels went. Jude 6. Or we just say Jude 6. Yeah. Jude 6. Are we there? And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Now, go, put your finger in Jude 6. Now go to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Second Peter chapter, now we need to understand the Bible a little bit better. Right, are we there in Second Peter? What does Second Peter read? Somebody has found it. For in God's not the angels that they move, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Where were the angels cast? Where were the angels cast? Huh? They were cast into hell. Now, think about these saints. God creates the heavens and the earth, right? In six days. What does he say at the end of the six days, after he's done his creation? He says it was very good. So why cast angels that have disobeyed into something he's created that is good? Why would he do that? If God created the heavens and the earth, he says this is good, right? But there are angels that have disobeyed. Why would we then allow them to go into the earth that is created, which is very good? Doesn't make sense, does it? So, how did they come onto the earth? Right. Okay. Let's read Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. This is how saints we are overcome. Romans 6, 16, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Romans 6, 16. Yeah, you can read. It says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So, to whom you obey, you become. Now, this is key. When, you are dealing, when we are dealing with the subject of angels, this is key. It's key, you will see why. When we go. Who was the king of the earth? Who was the king of the earth when he was made? Adam. So, for the angels to come onto the earth, what did Adam to do? What did Adam do? If we look at exactly, so Adam had to give up his obedience to God. Sorry, he gave up his obedience to God and obeyed the devil. Thus, by doing that, the earth became 
the devils. Are we all together? So the angels now claim this earth is theirs. And there are only 7 billion human beings. But there are billions and billions and billions of angels. By this means, if you, if, and you want to read where it happened, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Okay? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. This is when he comes to Eve and he says, you, need to, you can eat of the tree, you won't die. Then Eve eats, takes the fruit and gives it to Adam. As soon as he did that, the devil could now stand and claim the earth as his. So now you know who opens the door to the devil. By this means he has become the God, the prince of this world. The fair inheritance given to Adam has passed over into the possession of Satan until it shall be redeemed by Christ again. Now, here are the names of the... Go to John chapter 14, verse 30. John 14, verse 30. John 14, verse 80, 30. John 14, John 1, 4, verse 30. Sorry, three zero. Three zero. Three zero. Sorry, three zero. Because I'm looking at number 13 on here. John chapter 14, verse 30. Three zero. All right. It says here, hereafter I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world, and a prince of this world cometh, and there's nothing in me. Satan is identified by Christ as the prince of this world. So if he's a prince, that means he's a ruler. Now, another one is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible reads, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible reads, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan is identified as the God of this world. And as a God, he has dominion, he has people who worship him. Now, what is the role of all these angels that are on this earth that disobeyed God? What is their role? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. We know this one by head. Let's those who know it by head. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Those who know it by head. <laughs> For we wrestle not against, but against. Right. So the verse is telling us that the angels that have fallen that are on this earth have dominion. Right? They have structure. Now let's look at Mark chapter 5, verse 9. Mark chapter 5. Mark 5, 9. This is, this is when Christ met the demoniacs of, Ge of Gadara. Of Gadara. Mark chapter 5, verse 9. Mark 5, verse 9. The Bible reads, and he asked him, this is Christ asking, what is thy name? And he answered, 
My name is Legion, for we are many. Now, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, in the military operations of Cornelius and Julius Caesar, a legion composed of 10 cohorts, with four cohorts in the first line and in the second. 3,600 heavy infantry were supported by enough cavalry to bring the legion strength up to about 6,000 men. So a legion was about 6,000 men. This man, in Mark chapter 5, has got a thousand in him, or around him. A thousand, up to about 6,000 demons or evil spirits were affecting and attacking this man. Today, we would have put him in a mental institution and say he is not feeling well. Something is wrong. But actually, it was a legion of demons. Now, great controversy says this, page 513, paragraph 2. Evil spirits, in the beginning created sinless, were equal in nature, power, and glory with the holy beings that is the holy angels that are now God's messengers. So when they came down, the, the, the angels that disobeyed, they did not lose their power. They still have their power. So you are not dealing, when you read Ephesians chapter 6, you are not dealing with people or with things, with beings that have somehow been diminished. They are still as powerful against us as they were when they began. United with Satan in his rebellion and with him cast out of heaven, they have through all succeeding generation ages cooperated with him in his warfare against the divine authority. We are told in scripture of their confederacy and government, of their various orders and of their intelligence and subtlety. These evil angels are intelligent, more than you and I. And their malicious designs are against the peace and happiness of man. Their sole purpose is to cause you and I misery. Now, what is the power of these angels? What is the power of these angels on earth? Let's go to Revelation chapter 16, verse 14. Revelation chapter 16, verse 4. Revelation 16, verse 4. Sorry, 14. Sorry, my name is 14. Revelation 16, 14. That's the one I want. That will, um, 1614. Are we there? For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Angels can work miracles. You remember the story of Job. In Job chapter 1, verse 12 to 19, they have power over the elements. Okay? Angels can control the weather. Satan, you see, great controversy, 589, paragraph 2. Satan works through the elements to gather his harvest of unprepared souls. He has studied the secret laboratories of nature and he uses all his power to control the elements as far as God allows. Satan and his evil angels can control how cold it gets on the planet, how wet it gets on the planet, how hot it gets on the planet. And all 
also you need to recognize that angels can transform themselves to appear as human beings. And you can sit with them and talk to them as human beings. So you might be sitting right now next to an angel. And you never know it. You might catch a bus, drive a train, go to work, do something, sitting next to an angel. And you never know it. Until God opens your eyes. Now, angels can transform themselves into angels of light. We are told of that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 to 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 to 15. Now, this is in line with what is happening now. First, they can control the elements, the climate. Now, if you read 2 Corinthians 11, 14 to 15, then you read Great Controversy 589, paragraph 3. So in your Bible, what you ought to do is, when you get to 2 Corinthians 11, 14 to 15, right next to it, GC 589, paragraph 3. So you know which one is linking to which. Now remember I said they've got power. Now listen to this. This is 2 Corinthians 11, 14 to 15. Then write GC 589, paragraph 3. It reads this. It reads this. I'll read it for you. And you tell me if this is, if you have never come across this. While appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their disease, maladies, he will bring disease and disaster until popular cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Satan can cause countries to get sick. Multitudes of nations to get sick. Then what he does is then he brings you the cure. Listen to this. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. Satan can wipe away all the fields where there is wheat. Are we having a shortage of food now? Satan can do it. Now, how about the air? Look, listen to what he can, these evil angels will do. He imparts to the air a deadly taint, and thousands perish by pestilence. What does that remind you of? <laughs> Monkeypox. <laughs> Satan will cause us to get sick. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. We are seeing it today. Now, can we do something or can I do something to invite the devil and his angels into our homes and into our lives. Can I do things that can invite the devil to come? Remember, whom you obey, to whom you become the servant. Now, it does not matter what it is. And here we need to be careful because one of the things that we do is we like to watch movies. We like to listen to music. We like to eat things that are not right. Now the reason why I'm saying those things is because 
angels, right now evil angels, recognize that you and I know the truth of the scriptures. So the moment we begin to go and act contrary to what we know in the scriptures, the angels are coming. So if you are listening to things that angels themselves recognize, this is contrary to God, and this person understands it, you are opening the door for them to come in. So, my appeal to you today is this. When you go back to your homes, if you've got any DVDs, any CDs, any music, any magazines that are not in line with the word of God, go and burn them out. Because angels, demons, will come through that channel and you will get sick, you will have mental disorders, your health will be affected, anything will go wrong. It's not that you are mad, it's because you have opened the door to these evil beings. And these evil angels, have, they do not love you, they want to destroy you. And I don't know how I can emphasize this. I'm just telling you, when you go home, throw it out. All these people you are watching, some of them, I'm not saying all of them, that you admire so much, and you see them doing all these things. Some of these people have sold themselves. And by you watching and entertain, being entertained by them, you are inviting the demons in. And the same spirit that takes those people will come and take you. Are we all together? GC 558 paragraph 3 reads, All who indulge sinful traits of character or willfully cherish a known sin are inviting the temptations of Satan. They separate themselves from God and from his watch care of his angels. And the evil one presents his deceptions. They are without defense and an easy prey. The fact that men have been possessed with... Now, this is the question. Can evil angels possess the body of human beings? Have you ever thought about it? You know, when he cast these demons... In, in Mark chapter 5, what did the demons say? Okay, let's go to Mark chapter 5. I just want to show you this before we finish. Mark chapter 5. Go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Are we there? Now, read. Uh, I want us to read. Here is what I want you to see. Night. When Jesus, I'll start from verse 6, and I want you to see what the demons know. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, saying, These are the demons now who are talking to Christ. What have I to do with thee, thou son of the most high God? Demons recognize who Jesus is. And they also recognize that God Above the God of this world, there is God. That's why they call him the Most High. So they recognize, right, thou, what I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. Then Jesus says, come out of, out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Now, read this. Let's just drop down. And he besought, the verse 10 now, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Think of, these, they, these people are looking after pigs. They are in a field. The man with the demonics 
comes to Christ and the demon says to Christ, get us out, but send us into the country. But they don't choose any country. They say, send us to the pigs. Why didn't they just say, send us into the mountains? Demons want to possess a living thing. It could be your dog. It could be your monkey. It could be you. They want to possess a living thing. That becomes their home. That's why I'm saying to you, saints, we need to get rid of anything in our homes, be it a picture, be it a state, whatever it is in our homes that is not godly, especially music, get rid of it. When you go home today, get rid of it. Because when you start playing that video, when you start playing that music, you are now opening the door to say, I am a channel you can come through. And they will come. And remember, there are billions of them. This man in Mark chapter 5, he was one, but there were 3,000, more than 3,000 tormenting him. Can you imagine? A one human being being tormented by 3,000 demons. The evil angels know who Christ is. They are aware of the time. They know who God is. They are aware of the time that the time of judgment is coming. Do you know these things? However, there is an exception. You don't always get sick. You don't always become poor. There are exceptions. In Acts, I'll just read this for you because for the sake of time. In Acts chapter 19, verses 13 to 16, and Acts chapter 8, verses 9 to 24, you will read about people who were using the power of Satan to make money. Mark, sorry, Acts chapter 8, verses 9 to 24, and Acts chapter 19, verses 13 to 16. For the sake of obtaining supernatural power, some welcomed the satanic influence. These, of course, had no conflict with the demons. Of this class, of those who were possessed with the spirit of divination, remember Simon Magus? You remember? Remember when, when they went and they tried to cast the demons and the, and the demons said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Peter, I know. What are they telling you? If they are mentioning these people by name, that this one, I know him. This one, I know him. Peter, I know him. Paul, I know him. Barnabas, I know him. But who are you? It means when we are sitting in here, they know who is on God's side and who is not. And they are marking to say that one is on God's side. I can't touch. But that one, I can. Because they are watching us. Now, saints, so why can't the demons touch others and are not able to touch, uh, but are able to touch others. There's a very wonderful verse that you must remember. That verse says this. The angel of the Lord encompassed round about him that fear him and deliver him. Psalms 34 verse 7. And here is Christ now speaking to the people. He says, take heed that you despise not this one of these little ones. The little ones now. Why? For I say unto you that in heaven there are angels do behold the face of my father. They are angels who are appointed to look after you and I. Every day. A 
as you sit here, there are angels that are fighting battles for you and I. Satan himself recognizes that they are angels. Here's the beautiful part. They are angels that are surrounding you and I. And Satan is powerless against those angels. This is why he could not touch Job. Because the angels that were surrounding Job were stronger and powerful than him. So he had to take his case back to God and say, Lord, unless you remove these powerful angels, I can't touch Job. So as long as we remain in God's protecting care, no demon on earth will ever touch you. But if you step away from God's protecting care, you have no defense So what is going to be the end of these evil angels? What's going to be the end of them? The mission of Jesus is to destroy the work of the enemy. 1 John 3 verse 8. And not only does he destroy the works of the devil, but he is to destroy the devil himself. Hebrews 2.14. This is accomplished by the great plan of salvation, which we are all now involved in. Christ gives, gives himself first to die for man, then acts as an intercessor on behalf of and the and behalf of man, pardoning the the sins of you and I. Having finished his work as high priest, he returns in the clouds of heaven. His second advent, raises the righteous dead and translates the righteous living. First Thessalonians four sixteen to seventeen. At that point, even Satan himself has to step aside and see me rise into heaven. Satan is then bound for a thousand years. Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3. At the end of that period, the wicked dead are raised, and Satan ate there as their head, then comes up and surrounds the camp of the, camp of the saints, the beloved city. Here's the beautiful part. Fire comes down from God out of heaven and it devours them all at that point. And I am in a city made of gold. This is the great fire of the great day spoken of by Malachi 4 verse 1, which shall burn as an oven and consume all that do wickedly, root and branch. That is Satan all his evil angels and all the evil men. From this fiery ordeal, there comes forth new heavens and a new earth to be the home of the righteous. And that is where we are going. So my appeal to you today, I will repeat it again. When you go home today, because it's been written down, in the books of heaven, against your name, when you go home, search in your house. Do a diligent, diligent search. Is there anything in my house that will invite Satan in? If it is, take it, go outside, and light the fire. Because if you don't, Satan is going to destroy you and I. Because we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers in high places. Amen.